the hidden hunger. For many years during the 1800s, the Dutch East India Company sent settlers to the Orient, to China, Java, and the beautiful islands of the Pacific. From the first, an unusual disease struck the settlers. The victims grew weak. They couldn't eat. Their hearts weakened, paralysis set in, and finally death came. Natives of the area called their disease beriberi. The word means, I cannot. Although for centuries a few local people suffered from the disease, it had never become a major threat. For some reason, beriberi struck the European settlers especially hard. By 1885, officials of the Dutch East India Company spoke with Robert Koch. Something must be done about Berry Berry. We need your help. I would like nothing better than to go to the Orient to study this problem, he said. Alas, work keeps me at home. I cannot take on additional assignments. Who should we send in your place? the officials asked. There is a former student of mine who would be perfect, Robert Koch said. His name is Christian Eichmann. Christian Eichmann was a young Dutch doctor, and he lived in Amsterdam, Holland. In 1886, he was sent to Java to tackle Barry Barry. Only ten years earlier, Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch had published their studies of how bacteria cause certain diseases. The germ explanation for disease led to triumph after triumph. Its victories caused most doctors to jump to the conclusion that germs of one type or another caused all diseases. All we have to do, Eichmann said, is find the germ that causes beriberi and destroy it. He worked on the problem at a hospital at Java. Beriberi patients filled the hospital wards. They had expert medical attention, clean bed sheets, and the best food, fluffy white rice. Natives who lived outside the Dutch stockade knew little about modern medicine. They lived in unsanitary conditions and ate poorly processed foods such as brown rice. Many diseases struck the natives, but not beriberi. Why? Eichmann desperately searched for a disease germ. He peered through his microscope at the patient's blood, the water they drank, the food they ate. The distress of the men stricken by the disease left him sick with worry. He couldn't find the germ. The other doctors gave up. They left Java and sailed back home to Holland. Eichmann refused to give up. With money running low, he decided to inject chickens with blood from a beriberi patient. He performed the experiment and waited for the symptoms to show up in the chickens. The chickens remained perfectly healthy. Perhaps a beriberi bacteria did not infect them. Then, a horrible thought came to Eichmann. Suppose a germ did not cause beriberi at all. As he puzzled about this, the chickens did come down with beriberi. Their wings hung limp, and they stumbled around the chicken yard. All of them got the disease, even the ones that had not been part of his experiment. He watched them closely. Days passed. The chickens got well. Eichmann became a detective. What had caused them to recover? Why had they come down with the beriberi in the first place? He looked for a clue to the mystery. He asked the cook, What do you feed the chickens? Brown rice, the cook explained. Except last week I ran out of brown, and I used polished rice from the hospital storeroom. The hospital director made me stop. He said the white rice is too expensive for chickens. A simple experiment led Christian Eichmann to find the cause for beriberi. He separated the chickens into two groups. He fed brown rice to one group and polished rice to the other. The good, fluffy white rice caused beriberi. The poor quality brown rice cured it. This explained why the natives seldom came down with the disease. The natives always ate the brown rice. Settlers, on the other hand, ate rice that had been machine polished to remove the brown husks. Not only did the white rice look better, but with the oily husks removed, it kept longer without spoiling. 
there must be something in the husk that the human body needs for good health, Eichmann concluded. Eichmann explained his discovery to the hospital director. Unfortunately, the majority of doctors still considered beriberi to be a disease caused by germs. The hospital director dismissed Eichmann's discovery as nonsense. What? the director cried. You suspect the rice? Millions of people live on rice. It doesn't make them sick. But they eat brown rice, Eichmann pointed out. I suggest you buy brown rice for the patients. The director was furious. You leave the choice of food to me. I'm afraid you have been wasting your time. Haven't you ever heard of Louis Pasteur? You'd serve your patients a good deal better if you started looking for the germ that causes beriberi. Pasteur's success had blinded doctors to the possibility that diseases might be caused in more than one way. Six years passed. American doctors struggled to end an outbreak of beriberi in the Philippines. After all other means failed, they decided to feed their patients brown rice. Within two months, that action wiped out the disease, except for four men who refused to eat the despised brown rice. Eichmann had shown that some diseases could be caused by the lack of certain chemicals that must be in the diet. Sometimes the amount of the chemical needed is so very slight that even a trace amount is enough to keep the body healthy. Doctors eventually learned that the mysterious substance in the husks of rice is a vitamin called thiamine. Eichmann's work no longer went unnoticed. In 1929, he was awarded the highest honor of the scientific world, the Nobel Prize in Medicine. Smallpox, rabies, and many other diseases are caused by bacteria and other microscopic living things that infect the body. But doctors cannot blame all diseases upon germs. Dietary deficiency diseases like scurvy and beriberi are caused by the lack of vitamins. The word vitamin, coined in 1911, is from the Latin word vita, meaning life. Green vegetables, fruits, milk, grains, and meats all contain vitamins. They can be destroyed by long storage without refrigeration, by processing the food to keep it from spoiling, and by overcooking. Unlike diseases caused by germs, dietary deficiency diseases are not contagious. No amount of contact with the victims, their clothing, or body fluids will transfer the disease from a sick person to a healthy one. Dietary diseases can also be caused by a lack of minerals. Both vitamins and minerals are chemicals. Vitamins are more complex substances usually produced by living things. Minerals are simple chemicals like salt, calcium, and iodine. Goiter is an interesting example of a disease caused by the lack of a mineral, iodine. Iodine is a shiny blue-black crystal. When solid iodine crystals are heated, they give off a rather beautiful violet vapor. The vapor, however, is poisonous. The element iodine was discovered in 1811 by Bernard Courtois, a French chemist. Courtois collected seaweed washed ashore on the beaches of Normandy and Brittany along the French coast. He burned the seaweed to give ash. He washed the seaweed ash in hot sulfuric acid to purify it. On one occasion, he mixed in too much acid. When he heated the mixture, it gave off a beautiful violet vapor. When Courtois cooled the violet vapor, it changed into dark, lustrous iodine crystals. Iodine is a scarce element. It is found in seawater to some extent, but it is much less abundant on land. Several living things in the sea have the ability to concentrate iodine in their bodies. They have become an important source for the element. Kelp, a large brown seaweed, is a good source for iodine. Today, iodine has many uses in medicine. Tincture of iodine is prepared from iodine. It is alcohol with iodine dissolved in it. Iodine in this form is painted on cuts to kill germs. Iodine is also needed in the human diet to prevent goiter. This disease causes the thyroid gland at the front base of the neck to grow large. 
The cure for goiter was discovered by Jean Boussingault, a French agricultural chemist. The French chemist had read reports that certain salt deposits in South America prevented goiter. Upon checking a sample of the salt, he found that it contained iodine. Jean Boussingault suggested that iodine might be a cure for goiter. At first, doctors did not take his suggestion seriously. Eichmann's success over beriberi made them take a second look. We now know that the thyroid gland produces a chemical to regulate the speed at which the body uses food energy. The thyroid gland is located in the neck. Small amounts of iodine are essential in the diet to ensure proper functioning of the thyroid gland. If the diet contains too little iodine, the thyroid gland may become enlarged. This condition is known as goiter. Doctors believe the body enlarges the thyroid gland to capture whatever iodine is available. The amount of iodine needed to prevent goiter is very slight. The body of a healthy person contains about one two hundredth of an ounce of iodine. Almost all of that is found in the thyroid gland. For people who live by the sea, the slight amount of iodine in the water they drink or in the seafood they eat is enough to prevent goiter. For others, iodized table salt containing a small amount of iodide supplies the missing chemical. Iodized salt will reverse simple goiter or prevent its appearance. Iodine in larger amounts is toxic. Good nutrition is no accident. Lack of vitamins and minerals in the diet can often cause serious illness.